Hey guys, we got news on Global for the August 5th week for Legendary Hero Sephiroth. Uh, I decided to wait to make this news video until after we got the complete news, and then, you know, on the second day we got the remainder of the news for the raid event. So I'm going to go ahead and now that we have all the news, I'm going to be talking about it. Um, so the first thing I mentioned is we get the last round of quest for Cetra and Ascendant Aerith. This is the same thing as the past two weeks, I've already discussed this. Uh, this is the ones, um, this is the final round of quests, so you do these and we can finally get her to EX2. Um, completely free, if you've never pulled a single copy, you get enough for the EX2 um, on Thursday and this will give you, you know, her STMR, her Rod and Peril and all that. So make sure you knock that out. Um, we got a, the August monthly bulletin. Now this is not specifically for this week, this is for the entire month of August. But it's previewing um, the final bosses of Dark Visions and the next Clash of Wills. I'll go ahead and briefly mention it, but these are not for this week. I'm not, not really going to talk about it too much. Um, so for Dark Visions, the final bosses are going to be um, Saul, uh, Behemoth, and Chaotic Darkness. Uh, now these are the trial versions of these bosses. So unlike the usual Dark Visions bosses, where they're like just a, you know, a, a single fight that just like sits there and doesn't really do anything. These are actual trials with a full like AI and attack pattern and all that. So, you know, it'll be it'll be more interesting than usual in my opinion. I think I think the Dark Visions bosses like this are a little bit more interesting and you know cooler. But uh, we're gonna talk more about these later in the month when they actually arrive. And then Clash of Wills, um, the preview is it's gonna be a Dragon Reaper and it's weak to wind, fire and earth. Uh, we don't really have a whole lot of information about this, so we don't really have much to talk about. It's also not coming this week, so you know when it actually gets here, we will spend more time talking about it. Uh, and here's the UOC for the month of August, you know, pretty typical. And then the Adventure Crest for August, pretty typical, nothing really going on here. Um, I will point out that the Adventure Crest are back to the like usual amounts. Um, these were boosted for the month of July because of the anniversary, but now they're going back to the, the, the typical um, adventure request that we've been getting on Global for a while other than July. Uh, also, we're getting a new event on Global. Well, uh, a new version. We've, ha we've had this before. This is like a new version of the Friend Point Summon. Um, now we're going to be getting shards. Uh, this, is, this is an event that runs on the JP server every few months. Uh, I think this is the first time Global's getting it for unit shards. Uh, it gives you 10 shards per day, randomly divided among all Neo Visions and Neo Visions Awakened. It's one shard per unit, although the same the same unit can drop multiple shards in the same pool. So, like you know, you could potentially get like three Nocta shards on a single day, but with with such a big pool, the chances are low. But it happens. Um, anyway, you can do these summons uh, once a day for two weeks. So that's a grand total of 140 random shards split among all Neo, Neos and Neo Visions Awakenings. Uh, I will take a moment right now to rant a little bit because on Global, because we don't have the permanent shard dungeon like JP does, this is actually not that good for Global. It's fine on JP because um, if you get like, if you do the event, the, this, this daily summon, and you end up with like a weird number of unit shards, like let's say you end up at like 97 shards for Noctis. You can run Noctis in the shard dungeon for three days and top that off. On global, we never get single sources of shards. We only get them in, at the minimum, increments of five. So this is like really weird that global is not updating this to give um, like five at a time or 10 at a time so we can you know have a usable amount. Uh, maybe they change it before it releases on Thursday. So. Hopefully they will. Gumi, if you're listening, please update this to like five shards per summon instead of one. But if they don't, it is completely free. So, you know, take it as it is, I suppose. Uh, here is the the big thing of the week is Legendary Hero Sephiroth Neovisions. Um, if you're a frequent watcher of my videos, you know that I love this unit. I use him all the time in the JP server. Uh, I'll be pulling for him on global, so hopefully I get him pretty quickly. That's the plan, at least. Uh, but yeah, he is incredibly powerful. That's not a whole lot to say about that. He just hits really, really hard. He's a uh, double-hand LB finisher. He's locked to Dark Element, 
which is a little bit of a headache, but you can definitely work around that. Um, he is extremely similar to Tifa. So if you're familiar with the new Avalanche Tifa, Sephiroth is pretty much the same in almost every way. Uh, the, the, the differences are he is dark instead of water, he's double, head, double hand instead of true dual wield, and he is a single hit finisher instead of a multi-hit finisher. So yeah, in incredibly strong unit. He is premium, so like Tifa, he um, has a more expensive banner, a more expensive pity. Uh, you cannot get his shards from summon coins or lapis bundles. His shards for real money have been doubled in price. His shards for VIP coins have been tripled in price. So yeah, expensive unit, but very, very powerful. Uh, Neovision's Awakened Barrett is one of the disappointments. <laughs> We've had a few of these recently, um, like Rufus last week. Barrett is again, a little bit of a letdown. Uh, he is just like an, a mediocre DPS in the base form and like a underwhelming tank in the shift form. If you love Barrett, you can you can definitely make him work, but he's not going to be like the best option in any scenario. Uh, and then Avalanche, Biggs, and Wedge, they're the seven star of the banner. They're pretty okay-ish. Uh, they're a magical cover tank that has tag chains and entrust. So if you ever need that like specific set of skills on the same unit, they're usable. I've used them a few times in JP for like trial reruns because a magical cover tank that can also tag chain can be useful for slot compression. As far as being the actual tank, um, they aren't that strong because there's you know they're a seven star unit unfortunately, but they can work. Uh, yeah, step up for Sephiroth, exact same thing as Tifa. So we've seen this on Air, we've seen it on Tifa, and now it's Sephiroth. Same thing. It's 12k per lap. Um, you do five laps or 20 pulls in total to get a pity and then 28 pulls for the, the repeat pities if you go that route. Uh, the rest, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, the vision card, I'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about him. There's been no, gl no global changes to these units, or at least none announced in the news. All right, so the vision card on Sephiroth is, <laughs> once again, just like Tifa's. Are you seeing a theme here? Uh, the only difference is it swaps out the Beast Killer for Undead Killer. So 125 attack, 50 LB, and 100 undead killer that is usable on everyone and then for ff7 units only it is 500 extra flat attack and then this card is being added to the pool i think this is the ruggles card it's hard to tell from the back i think it's like ruggles and camille um in any case this is one of those um you know random cards you get just while pulling for a unit if you get an off banner you can get this card resistance card um you know it's got good water and earth resist if you need that so yeah there you go uh, the Chronicle Battle. The Chronicle Battle is Rufus Shinra. Uh, it is Final Fantasy VII. Um, as usual, you just go in there and you know you one shot him on turn one. Build build an OTK team, or if you can't, you know bring a breaker and he, he won't really deal much damage to you. Uh, FF seven units are the bonus. They're also the bonus for the raid. So just set those as your friend unit. Uh, and it gives you the Buster Sword. This is Neo Vision's Clouds TMR. It upgrades it to 190 attack, and it gives 1,000 attack and 50% LB damage to all versions of Cloud and Zack. Um, if, if you saw the video I posted yesterday where Zack was using this to kill Ashura, um, yeah, on Global, Zack doesn't have his upgrades, so a little bit sad. But in any case, he is going to be able to use the Buster Sword. And then the Guard Stick. Um, I mentioned this during the Aerith discussion like two weeks ago. This is going to be really good for Neovision's Cetra Aerith if you don't have Shui use STMR. Now that, she, now that she's getting EX2 this week for everybody, uh, she gets her Rod and Peril, and if you're using her to use um, Holy as a finisher, using a Rod can boost that damage by 35% additional, and this gives, um, it's only 103 Spirit, but it is a Rod, which is what what's the important part here. And it gives her 50% extra spirit. So if, if you don't have Shui use STMR, this is a really good alternative. And it's completely free from doing the Chronicles. So yeah. And then the raid news. This is this is the news that was delayed a day. And the reason I decided to wait to make this video an extra day. Um, this is like a really, really packed news. A lot going on here. But this is, this is the main event for the week. It's a raid. 
Um, if you look right here, this... Uh, um, I complained two weeks ago that they weren't giving the red pearls that JP got for Cetra Aerith's quest. Well, they're now adding them this week. Now, whether they're adding them, whether they were always going to add them, or they're, you know, reacting to the communities being a little bit disappointed about missing them. Either way, we are now getting the red pearls that JP got from the raid event. Eight red pearls, which is great. That's actually more than JP got, which is, you know, big thumbs up. JP got five, we're getting eight. Um, in any case, uh, yeah, eight red pearls. I I'm super happy about that. I am like, it seems like I'm permanently low on red pearls on global. That's gonna be a tremendous help for me to awaken a few units that are, you know, sitting on the bench waiting to be awakened. In any case, there is the raid. It's a typical raid. Raid, you know, dying one hit. So just, just bring your finisher and kill it. Um, this is the Massa Moon for Sephiroth. Um, the, the final version is lower in the news, but you get it from the raid. So this is Sephiroth's special weapon. The final form of this weapon is his best in slot. You, you, you craft the upgrades by doing the raid, so make sure you do the raid. You get um, some random event from the raid too. Um, not really great gear, but uh, could be good for uh, starter players. But this is really good. Um, we get some some um, undead killers. You know, undead is one of those harder to gear for races, and getting more sources of undead killers is outstanding. So here's um, it's actually pretty good too. 50 attack and defense and 50 killer. That's like really nice. And then 50 spears and 50 more killer. Great. Uh, both of these are physical killers, which is a little bit strange. You, you kind of expect them to give you like a magical killer as well, but they're not. But um, whatever. More killers is a good thing. Uh, also, um, you know, bonus for the raid. Like I said, make sure you set a bonus friend for your friends on your list. Um, da -da, all this. Keep going. Here is the. Uh, this is the. Um, the EX battle for the event. It's kind of like the Lord of the Sewers from Tifa's or Aerith's event, where you had to kill it in two turns. This is gonna be the exact same thing. It's a, it's a new boss. It's a um, undead. I can't remember if it's only undead or if it's undead and the dragon. I think it might be just undead. In any case, um, this is gonna be a, a boss that if you have Sephiroth or Tifa, they can blow it up super easy. Uh, if you've got the upgraded Aerith, she can again kill this in two turns very easily with uh, Reflected Holy, and I'll be putting out a budget guide of how to kill it in two turns on Thursday. But yeah, um, bring Aerith, Reflect Holy, do it again on turn two, the boss will die. There you go. Uh, and doing that is how you're going to get the upgraded version of Massive Moon for Sephiroth. Now this is going to be Sephiroth's best in slot weapon in almost every scenario. So I really, really, really recommend you do this. It's time limited. You don't want to miss out on this. It gives Sephiroth 500 extra flat attack and 50 LB damage. So yeah, definitely get this katana before the event ends. That's pretty much it for the week. Um, a bunch of uh, brave bosses rerunning. And yeah, that's it. So there, there's the event. Um, some really great news about those eight Transcension Pearls. That, that just puts a big smile on my face. I'm so happy to see that. Uh, Sephiroth, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be doing his pulls on Thursday. I, I really want his EX3, but I might stop at EX2 if the pulls are going poorly. We'll see. But yeah, there's, there's the news. Not really a whole lot to talk about. It's just, you know, a Chronicle. Um, Chronicle, a raid, and an EX fight. But yeah, it'll be fun to do. And then we're getting... Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to Clash of Wills, which will probably be next week. So a brief week to recover after Dark Visions, and then it's time to go into Clash of Wills probably next week. In any case, I will see you guys then. Later.